said we had been climbing. We are on the moon. What do you make of them, Captain? Must be some pressure. Question is, what's below? One way to find out. down to the basement, black as a sack. The dogs are getting spooked. I doubt if any party could travel in such weather. There is food for thought in picturing our small party struggling against adversity in one place, whilst others go smiling forward in the sunshine.
saw. More dog food. Do you want to come in? Can't. Got a meeting. Which one? Michael. Done for. Makes one feel just a little bitter, does it not, Bill? To contrast such weather with that experienced by our predecessors. We've had no luck, it's true. But we plug on. Well, gentlemen. Our appalling luck with the weather on this leg of the journey and the delay it has caused means that we have somewhat overrun our provisions, food and fuel, by some three or four days. That's right, sir. I'm afraid we'll be forced to break into our summit rations this evening. So, the question I must resolve is whether it makes any sense to continue feeding the ponies during this infernal and unending blizzard, or kill them here and use them as an extra source of food for men and dogs. The paramount consideration, to my mind, is the welfare of the ponies themselves. Four, five, have succumbed already. Is it right to demand more of the remainder? Should we not simply kill them here and now and put an end to their unspeakable misery? Any thoughts, Bill? It's a cleft stick, I can see that. If the weather were kind tomorrow, the problem solves itself. What does Titus think? I don't see the point of killing the ponies here. The food they'd provide would barely cover the extra rations we need to haul their loads leaving no supplies to depot for the returning parties. And the suffering? I don't see how that can be helped. Whatever I decide about the ponies, it's becoming clear I shall need to take the dogs on beyond the foot of the glacier. I'd like you to take a fairly detailed look at what that's likely to cost us, Birdie, in food and fuel, say, two days on the glacier itself. Very good, sir. I know things aren't so rosy, sir, just now, but I do believe we have the spirit to make it up somehow later on. So do I, Birdie. Well said. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll let you have my decision when I've given the matter fuller consideration. Spirit, hey, Bill? Mm. Whatever happens, we're going to have to make good the stuff we've borrowed already on this leg, aren't we? It's in hand, Bill. Simpson has orders to take the dogs back as far as one ton depot with what we'll need. So, you won't want to take the dogs on too far, will you? In case they don't get back in time to replenish the depot. By rights, they should have turned back a week ago. This weather isn't my doing, Bill. We'll manage. We've done it before, eh? <laughs> you spoken to Mears? Mm. Said I'd take a look at that eye of his. Two days, you say? Yes. Might be the time to bring up again the whole business of next season, Con. What do to find ourselves at the mercy of inexperienced drivers come the spring? I'm not prepared to beg, Bill. No chance of moving on, little sir! Impossible to steer in this stuff, Bill! Don't want to get lost! Napoleon, gentlemen. <laughs> Give up your books, my boys. I'll be buggered. Without thieving, Taffy. Well, it's better than playing with himself. How did you come by it, Taff? Dancing to somebody's whistle. Or doing a little knee drill, eh? As a matter of fact, I got it from Susan Atkinson. 
All found above board. It's for all Bill's chests there. So what have you found out, Tap? Well, it's still four for the big one. The owner, three others. Wilson, probably, for science, you see. Never mind if the bugger can pull. Another officer, Evans, Bowers, Atkinson, someone like that. And like as not someone from the lower deck. And if that's true, my boys, you could be perusing that very body right now. You reckon you'll get the nod, do you, Edgar? I better, I tell you. <laughs> 